Now I'd like to turn the page into our next spiritual practice, and it is the spiritual practice of Sabbath, Sabbath. When we think about Sabbath, we have many different concepts. Some of us grew up with the idea that Sabbath is Sunday, it's church day, and on the Sabbath, you simply have a fun, you watch things you wanna watch, you take walks, you eat food you wanna eat. The truth is, for many people in the world, Sunday is kinda like Saturday. It's another homework day. It might be they get some things done when they're off from their other job. For other people still, it's a pure, full-on work day, just like any other day of the week. And they have a regular, strung-together set of seven days and 14 days and 21 days without any pause or rest. So in the beginning, in Genesis, we see God beginning to institute ideas among his people that become very important to the life of the church for millennia to come. All the way into Exodus where we see these ideas of the Ten Commandments coming. And in the midst of this, we see that in creation, at the end of God's work, God rested. Which is a very funny thing to think about because most of us think God wouldn't need to rest. Would God need to rest? Why would God be God if God needed to rest? And then we see later in the Ten Commandments that it's actually a principle embedded in those Ten Commandments that we are to rest. Why? Like God, we are to rest. We're to remember the Sabbath and we're to keep it holy. Now here's why that's pretty interesting. Back in the ancient Near East, there were many origins narratives that were floating around. And one of them was this strong idea that was rife throughout the world of the time. And that is that human beings existed to be slaves to the gods. The gods basically got to recline and relax and play and fight and do whatever they do. But human beings were the workforce. We're the ones that had to make work happen. And of course, this created great justification for entire cultures being enslaved by others. And all of a sudden, God steps into this covenantal situation with the Jews and he declares what will be the great resistance to the overriding narrative of the day. That people were not made to work all the time and work to death. That even the goal of life was not work. That rest was to be a a central, uh, woven into the fabric part of every person's life. So much so that even in the commandments, the suggestion was anyone that doesn't keep the Sabbath needs to be put to death because they're going to ruin it for thousands of years for other people, other people, if you lose the Sabbath. Well, are people today in our world enslaved to work? One could say they probably are. In fact, many of us in many ways are. We're enslaved to the love of money. We're enslaved to being productive. We're enslaved to getting things done. Some, in some cases, we don't even know why we work so hard. We just do. We champion it and call it a work ethic. But at the same time, if there isn't a rest ethic that goes along with it, we start to break down over time. We wonder why people have so much stress in their lives that their bodies begin to shut down, that they begin to battle chronic illnesses. They begin to battle some things, not all things can be avoided, but some things simply because of an overwhelming point of stress in their lives, getting no relief or release. So God comes in at the beginning and says, here's what you're gonna do. One day a week, you're going to rest. And I believe that we don't see in the scriptures one day a week you're going to go experience entertainment. One day a week you're going to go just do whatever you want. One day a week God was saying you're going to stop all your labors. You're going to declare as resistance to the world around you that we don't depend on work for our fulfillment that God doesn't need us to work 24-7 to be our provider who is your provider anyway. That God wants us to focus on our relationships, our relationship with Him, our relationship with other people. That God wants our bodies to physically rest from work. And if you're a thought worker where, where you're working on computers all the time or you're doing other types of work, then you have to rest from that type of work as well. It's not only applying to physical labor, but to mental labors as well. What did God know? He knew something that my wife uh, calls her, her mini vacation. God knew that we need a mini vacation every week. That we need a space that we call sacred. A period of time in which we step back from our labors. 
we find ourselves in our relationship with God again. We find ourselves in relationship with others. We worship and remember the story in which we live so that we don't walk into the next day and the next week still in the old story that was starting to accumulate in our lives because we weren't pausing to remember, to worship within the story that we were in. So the Sabbath was meant to be kept sacred, to be kept holy, and that ancient story was meant to break the back of this idea that we are slaves. You and I are no longer slaves. We're no longer slaves to fear. We're no longer slaves to our work. And in that situation, God spoke and said, for all time, you will rest. You will rest one day a week. You will remember who you are. You'll remember whose you are. You'll remember why you are. You will cultivate the things that last. No one on their deathbed is wishing they had worked more hours. Straight up. No one on their deathbed is necessarily wishing, oh, I wish I had accomplished more in 24 hours. What are the things that people go to their deathbed thinking about? Relationships. Quality of life. Did they enjoy the people around them? And, and did other people enjoy who they were? Did they give gifts into people's lives? And did others have a chance to give gifts into them? They're aware of their relationship with God crossing that line. This is the gift of Sabbath. It is a constant remembering. And remembering literally means to remember, bring members back together, reconnect us, reintegrate us, recenter us so that we don't continue in that frenzied lifestyle that causes us to disintegrate in our values, in the things we deeply care about. We're going to talk about the rule of life in our next session, and that's going to be these values around which we orbit our lives. Sabbath helps us reorient to what is truly important to us so we don't drift along carried along by the workforce, what other people are saying, how things are going in our bank account. We are centered in an ongoing rhythmic way in Christ and we're centered in our relationships with others. The Sabbath causes us to defeat self-reliance. We are compelled to trust, to know that God will provide if we're not working that day during the week. We learn to love the elements of community and laughter and play doing things that put us in what psychologists call flow state, where we're doing something and all of a sudden we realize time has passed and we don't know where the time went. We can feel like that about work, but think about that thing you do, that when you do it, you simply lose track of time. It's such a delight to you. That's being in a flow state. Things that are essential to the quality of life. Now, sometimes people take a Sabbath and they try to fill it with entertainment, with more things that can distract them and give them delight and, and dazzle their eyes. Now, hear me. I like entertainment. I love movies like the next person. But I try to find in my Sabbaths entertainment that has more to do with the relationships I'm in, playing games together, entertainment like reading, where my body can be still, where I can be quiet, where I'm not simply told where to go, I get to participate in where I'm going in my imagination. It breaks this chain in us that causes us to believe that we live to work. We could actually begin to believe that we work to live and to rest, that we have new goals in our lives that are actually goals of enjoying the people around us and the life that God has given us when we can. We learn to rest using Sabbath and putting this discipline into our lives, this habit, this practice. We learn to rest in sound mind and calm vigor of thought. There's a passage in 2 Timothy 1, 7 that says, God has not called you to a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and of power. And then this phrase, and a sound mind. The word there literally means a calm vigor of mind that you have vigor, that you're healthy, that you're strong, but you're calm. You're moving in a paced way. Your mind is not frenetically uh, drawn into the chaos of all the thoughts and ideas and needs that are going on. You're actually stilling your soul in a regular rhythmic basis and it literally changes who you are as a person, how you approach work. Others look at you and say, wow, they do life differently than us. They regard a day a week as sacred, as holy unto the Lord. God apparently thought it was important enough to put it in the commandments and to say, 
you know what, if anyone breaks this law this early on in history, we're gonna have to take them out of the picture because it's gonna ruin it for the rest of you. Delight yourself in the rest gifts that God has given us. One of those is Sabbath. I wanna encourage you, because we can't really practice Sabbath in this session, I wanna encourage you to take the next Sunday, if you can make it Sunday, you might be in a situation where your Sabbath has to be on another day, and I wanna encourage you to find entertainment to find rest and delight that lets you experience uh, silence and stillness and solitude, that gives you connection with other people who you love to be around, who renew you and energize you, entertainment that doesn't tell you where to go, but you participate in going somewhere. Find ways to rest your body, to still your mind, so that you get the renewal you need and the reorientation with a community in worship as you gather together and reclaim the story in which we find ourselves, so that as you enter into the next week, you do so from the standpoint, from the foundation of being loved, remembering we're loved, and moving from the place of rest.